Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. It's a relatively warm and comfortable day across the state line today. We've made it into the mid 70s, which is still below average for this time of year, but really comfortable considering that we are into the middle and end of August. Dew points are also down in the 50s, indicating really comfortable air and not a lot of humidity that we've been dealing with because of high pressure sitting overhead. That's the case when we look with satellite and radar. Not a whole lot of activity here locally, but we're starting to see a bit more of that moisture and cloud cover building in well out to our west. Temperatures tonight will drop back down into the low 50s for many of us for the overnight lows returning into the 70s again tomorrow. A warm up is expected as we head to the weekend. I'll let you know how quickly we will see temperatures rise close to 90 degrees coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Charges are filed in a Rockford murder case. The two men being held responsible for a 2021 shooting. Plus, giving back to a state line veteran how community members are helping upgrade his home so he can stay in it. And training for an emergency. The state line fire departments coming together to iron out their response plans. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Wendell Edwards. We thank you for being here. Tonight, two Rockford men are charged after police say they murdered a man nearly three years ago. Kenneth Trenor and Brandon Taylor are charged with first-degree murder. In October of 2021, Rockford police were called to a home on Jonathan Avenue for reports of a shooting. There, officers found Louis Lee. The 28-year-old was taken to a hospital where he later died. The shooting was captured on the home security cameras. Detectives identify Trenor and Taylor as the two suspects. Trenor is currently being held in the Department of Corrections on an unrelated case. Taylor is in custody in the Winnebago County Jail for the 2020 murder of Tammy Gonzalez. We now know the identity of the body pulled from the Rock River in Ogle County. The family of Carter McGowan has confirmed his body was found yesterday near Route 2 between Oregon and Byron. He disappeared after leaving a UW health clinic back in January. He was a graduate of East High School and volunteered for Noah's Ark, Animal Sanctuary, and the Northern Illinois Food Bank. Family members say they are appreciative of the love and thoughts and prayers they've received. The Beloit community is rallying support around a 91-year-old veteran. They're hoping to raise money to repave his driveway, helping him stay in his home. Eyewitness News reporter Blake Dietz went to and spoke to the family today. Blake, I understand a local charity is getting involved too. Yeah, that's right, Wendell. Mimi, Air Force veteran Bob Knox's children tell me the 91-year-old is kind, smart, and fiercely independent. Knox served his country for years before making his home in Beloit, and now his family is hoping the community can return the favor. Knox resides alone, and worsening eyesight has threatened his ability to stay independent. Veteran charity Vets Roll started a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for a new driveway, allowing the vet to safely walk outdoors. Knox's stepda stepdaughter says it would be a lifesaver. Absolutely very important to him. He, he is very independent and stubborn. <laughs> he needs that independence, even though he can't see in as old as he is. So we got to give him some independence. And he's missing this because he can't walk and he used to walk down to the curb and back. And he, he can't do that now, so he's getting weaker because he can't walk. Coming up at 6, we'll hear from Knox and the organization helping him get the driveway he needs. Wendell. Thank you very much, Blake. We salute him, too, for his service. Illinois has officially banned corporal punishment in schools. Illinois is the fifth state in the nation to ban the practice. The state already banned any forms of hitting students in public schools in the 1990s. And this latest step bans it in private schools, too. Although the ban officially takes effect in January, several private schools say they abandoned this practice long ago. While students are heading back to class across the state line, illnesses are also making a return. But one OSF doctor says there's no need to worry because they're expecting to see these numbers rise around this time of year. It's because students are in closer areas sharing germs. This month, OSF counted nearly 150 patients who've been seen for respiratory illnesses. They say this could be related to COVID or any other flu-like symptoms. We're seeing all types of respiratory viruses, you know, and everyone is always hones in on COVID. One, COVID is one of them that we are seeing, but there's many other viral illnesses that we're seeing, but it's not been a significant increase like we've seen in, in you know, years past. Doctors say there are a few ways that we can stay safe. Make sure your children are up to date on vaccinations and stay home if you feel sick. 
Frequent hand washing, getting your rest and eating healthy are also important. A local police therapy dog has died unexpectedly after he just began serving the Harlem School District. The Loves Park Police Department says its therapy dog, Conway, died after an emergency yesterday. Conway had just started his journey providing support and therapy services to students and staff within Harlem schools. The department says his death is a sudden is sudden and it's a tragic loss and that Conway's kindness and dedication will be greatly missed. The Winnebago County Animal Shelter is waiving adoption fees to help free up space. Starting today, the shelter is waiving same-day adoption fees for more than 30 dogs. Right now, it has more than 100 dogs in the building. Officials say the full house means difficult decisions will have to be made to free up space or provide life-saving treatment. A link to the shelter's adoption questionnaire can be found on our website, mystateline.com. Stateline Fire Departments come together to hone their skills while on the job. South Beloit Fire Departments holding a comprehensive water supply training exercise. Six regional departments will test and refine techniques like relay pumping, drafting operations, and establishing long-distance water supply lines. These skills will help firefighters when managing large-scale incidents with limited access to water. One battalion chief says it's a great chance for everyone on the job to learn and teach. I think learning and teaching at the same time allows us to really dissect the problem. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do today is figure out some failure points. We knew that the drill would have some failures and that was de by design, so we know what to address for next time. All these plans look great on paper until we put them into action. We want to actually put them into action to see what fails. Water supply training exercises will continue over the next two days. Tonight, Cherry Valley residents can learn more about that Microsoft data center that could be coming to the village. At 6.30, the Planning and Zoning Commission is holding a meeting. Microsoft will be giving a formal presentation on this data center at that meeting. Construction would begin in 2026 and take four years to complete. The center would be over farmland that runs from Valley Orchard to Wheeler Road. It is expected to bring 200 permanent jobs and thousands of temporary construction jobs to the village. The meeting is open to the public, but it is a committee meeting, so comments or questions will not be allowed. It is the third day of the Democratic National Convention. Up next, which political heavy hitters are set to speak and what former President Trump is doing on the campaign trail to counter the DNC. And coming up at 6, combating price gouging, how one federal initiative could affect local businesses. Our temperatures have warmed into the mid-70s here today underneath high pressure and lots of sunshine. I'll let you know when our temperatures are expected to start to climb as we head closer to the weekend and when we see a warm-up on the way and our next rain chances coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Mimi Murphy, Wendell Edwards, Scott Leber, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Day three of the Democratic National Convention has a lineup full of political heavyweights, and the headliner is the keynote from vice presidential nominee, the governor of Minnesota, Tim Walz. Christiana Cordero has the latest from the United Center in Chicago, plus where former President Trump is stumping for votes. One month to the day since Vice President Kamala Harris ascended to the top of the Democratic ticket. Her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, will step onto the convention floor to formally accept the nomination. The former congressman rose to prominence by flipping a rural Minnesota district in 2006 after a career serving in the National Guard while teaching and coaching football. He was the faculty advisor for the Gay Straight Alliance. This is him because he, as the macho man football coach, would not abide one kid feeling like he was in the out crowd. Beyond the folksiness and the flannel jokes, Walls is expected to share what he would bring to the White House. The keynote address follows a long list of Democratic leadership, including Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, who was widely considered a top VP contender. We have a winning ticket and we've got a hell of a clear contrast in this race. Former President Donald Trump heading south on the campaign trail today. 
He and his VP pick, Senator J.D. Vance, rallying at a national security event under the theme Make America Strong Again, with additional security measures of his own. It's Trump's first outdoor event since July's assassination attempt. The former president today speaking behind bulletproof glass. Every American was safer under President Trump. In fact, the entire world was safer. Despite leading in polls on issues related to the economy and immigration, the Republican ticket has struggled to regain momentum since Biden dropped out. But Tuesday's message from one of the party's most revered figures, former First Lady Michelle Obama, was about combating complacency. Consider this to be your official ask. Michelle Obama is asking you, no, I'm telling y'all to do something. Sources tell ABC News independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. plans to drop out of the race by the end of the week, adding that he's leaning towards endorsing former President Trump, but that he hasn't finalized that decision. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Chicago. We have another day of 70 degree weather. It was nice, mm -hmm. but really, really cold this morning, though. <laughs> Had to turn on the heater. When we come back, Jordan tells us about the warm weekend ahead. Now, your first warm weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Crisp blue skies across the state line tonight, and that's still going to continue as we head through the rest of our evening. This showing up with our Mercy Health SkyTrack camera overlooking. Freeport brought to us by the Rockford Career College. We have a lot of that sunshine and fairly still wind on the flagpole there showing that off as well. And that's where we're going to see with high pressure overhead. Fairly light winds, relatively clear skies, and also really comfortable dew points. That's been the case throughout yesterday, continues to be so today, and even through most of tomorrow, we're going to continue to see the relatively comfortable air in place. High pressure overhead with the Great Lakes. We see a lot of the cloud cover and moisture well off to our south and to our west, keeping it away from us. And that's really the good news, keeping our temperatures relatively comfortable. We're down in the 70s right now. 75 in Rockford, 74 in Sterling, 73 Freeport, as well as in Rochelle, 74 DeKalb. But our dew points across the region, even more comfortable than those temperatures. Down in the 50s, indicating not very much moisture for a lot of that to work with, especially down near the surface, which is a measurement of that dew point. Fairly similar to that, our temperatures are going to drop really close to where those dew points are at right now. We're down into the low 50s for the overnight hours tonight, underneath clear skies throughout the rest of the evening. Now, with the clear skies and light winds, those temperatures will be a bit quicker to fall off, especially once the sun sets, and then gradually kind of plateau as they get closer and closer to the early part of the morning. But as we get into tomorrow, our temperatures will start to warm then with the sun coming right back up. We're into the upper 70s this time around, 79, mostly sunny skies and fairly pleasant conditions. But winds shifting out of the south allow for those temperatures to warm a few more degrees than where we were today. High pressure overhead, looking at that with Futurecast now, we see a lot of that keeping our skies clear. A gradual increase in cloud cover through Thursday, mainly in the upper levels though. We're not going to be seeing much in the way of precipitation until we get closer to Friday night or more than likely into Saturday night. This is what we look like when we head toward Friday afternoon. A bit more of that moisture and cloud cover beginning to form in some rain chances as we head into Friday afternoon, but this will remain well to our west, at least in that short term. Decaying showers may push their way in, though, as we get into Friday evening and Friday night, with additional chances into early Saturday morning, and then potentially more widespread rain chances once we get into Saturday night. This will be all forming along the northern edge of an incoming ridge of high pressure. That ridge of high pressure going to bring us really a lot more of that warmer air, typical summer-like ridge building in almost directly overhead. And we see that with this up and down flow in our jet stream, this ridge centered directly over the Midwest is what's going to bring us a bit more of that warmth, especially as we head into the weekend. So looking at how that impacts our temperatures, we're talking about highs back up into the 80s and 86 degrees on Saturday, 88 on Sunday, 90 degrees on Monday. Meanwhile, our heat index values will be pushing close to the low 90s and even toward the triple digits once we head into Monday, likely going to be our warmest day there in the short term. As far as our rain chances go, we're not looking at much in the shorter term. I mentioned that chance Friday night and then again Saturday night. But more than likely, once this ridge breaks down, it will begin to bring a more active pattern here into the shorter term. We're at 79 degrees tomorrow, 80 degrees on Friday. Then we start the warmth. We're back into the mid-80s, upper 80s, and near 90 degrees for a little while. But we see that ridge 
begin to break down toward the early and middle parts of next week, bringing us those rain chances as it begins to do so. Thank you, Jordan. Scott's in next with sports. North Boone had one of the strongest football teams in the Big Northern Conference last year. We'll see if the Vikings might have a similar season in store this year. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. The North Boone Vikings were a strong third place finisher in the Big Northern Conference last season. For the first time in several years, they don't have any members of the Dutch family on the roster, but the Vikings will again have some firepower. Here's a look in our football two a days. The guys in green will be a little green this year when it comes to experience. We had a lot of turnover, uh, graduated a lot of seniors that had a lot of snaps for us last year. so. Uh, it's, it's a younger group. There's a lot of spots up for grabs and guys have been working hard. The Vikings graduated most of their bigs on the line. Guys that called themselves Warhogs last year. But all-conference player Patrick McCarty is back. He'll play on both lines. They were a great unit last year and you know they were my family. I mean I love them but uh, you know the people we got now are also my family and they, they got that Warhog in them too. You know, we're excited about the guys that we have that are coming in here. Um, like I said they're, they're young but they're hungry. The Vikings also have a new starting quarterback, R.J. Wolski. He really just understands the offense more uh, in, in concepts and what we're trying to do in the passing game especially. Um, but he's a guy, you know, we like his legs too, so um, he's, he can make plays with his legs and through the air. When Wolski goes to the air, 6'4 junior Brad Dahl will probably be the first guy he looks to. Dahl made some big catches last year. With North Boone's spread offense, it takes more than one good receiver. As usual, the Vikings seem to have several good ones. Yeah, we have a really good group of guys this year. We have one through ten can really do it. But we're going to just keep working and getting better. Asriel Dixon is back after starting at receiver last year as a sophomore. He's a speed guy. And running back, look for Connor Chamberlain and Jacob Webb to get a lot of carries. But some of those receivers could also get carries. Most of these same guys will line up on defense, and the Vikings have a new defensive coordinator in Tony Libet. Our defense new with uh, Tony Libet. It's going to be really good, new, new defense, so we're going to be working, and our, everyone really, we're all working hard. Later tonight on the second part of our two days, I'll stay in Boone County to preview the Belvedere North Blue Thunder. At Sports, we'll be right back. First Warning Interactive Radar brought to us by Rockford Glass and More, continuing to show the clear skies underneath high pressure that we have here in the short term. That'll allow our temperatures to drop back down into the low 50s overnight tonight, and a couple spots may even touch the upper 40s, very similar to where we were last night. Sunshine returns again to start off our day tomorrow, allowing for temperatures this time around to get closer to 80 degrees. We're back into the upper 70s for tomorrow afternoon's high and even warmer once we head closer to the weekend. A bit more cloud cover for Friday, but we may see a few rain chances begin to work their way in Saturday night with a bit more of the warmth as well. Mid to upper 80s for the weekend, then cut to close to 90 on Monday. Jordan, thank you. We'll see you at 6.